TBC Center presents The Sphere of Influence. The Sphere of Influence is the TV ministry of the baptizing church where everyone is blessed, lifted, edified, strengthened, and encouraged by the word of faith and the power of the Spirit. For further inquiries, please log on to www.tbccenter.org or visit TBC Center New Road Bus Stop. Lekki, Lagos, Nigeria. The world works. Father, we thank you for this morning, Lord, even as we go into your word, as we glean from your word, as we reason together with your word. Father, we thank you for understanding. We thank you for light. We thank you in the name of Jesus for grace made available to every family every husband and wife and every potential husband and wife here today in the name of jesus thank you because your spirit will cause us to understand the intent of god as regards love and marriage in the name of jesus and as many marriages that are going through at this time lord we ask and we pray for restoration we ask that your word will go into their heart and we will bring about healing in the name of jesus it will break, remove all the scales of their eyes and they will begin to see clearly through your word and they will receive help in the name of Jesus. The Bible says concerning Jesus when he began to teach people began big people were, were healed. Lord in the name of Jesus as we rub minds with your word healing will begin to take place in the name of Jesus. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. So I cannot say why did they give me GLG. Because we're there that day with the pastors and I said I would do GLG. But honestly, um, I talk about every other thing, but relationship is something that is so dear to my heart. Did you get out your smile? It is so dear to my heart, and because I believe that there is a world definition of love. And there's a biblical definition of love. There is a world definition of marriage. And there is a biblical definition and principles that we need to abide by when it comes to marriage. And so because I'm talking to Christians, I want us to look back into the scriptures and understand what it is. What is God's mindset? What is his desire? What it is? Why on earth did he even come about the principle of marriage? Like I was sharing with Daisy earlier this morning. I said, why didn't God say Adam and Steve should marry? Why didn't you just create another Adam and call him Steve? Why did he create something else almost totally different from Adam to complement each other and to bring about something that we're still benefiting from today? Why? Physically, a woman is different from a man. Emotionally, we are different. We know that. Psychologically, we are different. Socially, we are different. Spending, we, spending, how will I call it now? Spending early, we are different. You know, we're, we're just so different. And like I was telling Daisy too, this morning, I said, it's amazing also how God somehow pierced two people that are different. One likes to just sit at home. The other likes to just uh, hang out. <laughs> like, you know. The other likes to read. The other one just likes to watch TV. Like, I heard a very funny, I don't know if it was true, that they, a couple was fighting, one wanted to watch Telemundo. I mean, was this the word? <laughs> the husband wanted to watch football. Bah, 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 wife died. I'm not joking. In this Lagos. I want to watch Asena. No, it's a Z word. I want to watch Asena. Me, I feel that one is poverty. <laughs> because if they had two decoders, go to your room and watch your Z word. Or understanding. That's the story for another day anyway. But then, you know, and then I began to think, and then also because of uh, the uniqueness of the people I reach out to, babes you define, I hear all sorts. Initially, I wasn't really bothered because I felt... It's people of the world. But then when it started coming closer home, within the church, within the body of Christ, I'm like, wait a minute. Then there's a problem that we need to address. It is like 
a growth is like a cancerous growth. It is gradually eating into homes and families. And that's why I wanted us to pray for the fathers earlier on. Because the truth is, the men have the, they have the bigger cut as regards responsibility. Is, this is not about being a feminist. Although being a feminist isn't so bad, really. But it's not about that. It's not about, you know, I'm fighting, I'm a woman, I'm a man. It's beyond that. It's about understanding our roles and being able to say, okay, this is it. You know, I often tell people that we're not competing. The man isn't competing with the woman. The husband isn't competing with the wife. The wife is not competing with the husband. God has so designed it as such that you both have your uniqueness, but when you bring it together, you complement one another in a grand way that the devil even is confused. Amen. And so the issue of, you know, uh, uh, you know we are different, compatibility and all that, I feel that when, when the main thing is dealt with, when the main thing is dealt with, which we're going to look at, every other thing will just, you know how the Bible says that when you seek first the kingdom of God, every other thing will be added. When, but most times, we seek the every other thing. You find people, oh, pray for me, oh. You see people taking names everywhere. I want to know if it's my husband, if it's my wife. And then you begin to ask the most important question. Have you not prayed about it? Is he born again? And then you're thinking about, are we compatible? That's jumping the gun. That's putting the cart before the horse. Compatibility cannot come before, is it the will of God? The will of God is the final thing. I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. When Joseph was in, Joseph was in love with Mary. Clear. Because the Bible says he loved her. Loved her enough to want to, enge to be engaged, was engaged to be married to her. Now, I don't think their own marriage was a rangy marriage. It might have been, no, I don't know. But the Bible clearly states that he loved her. And then an issue came, and Joseph was ready to walk away. And honestly, I don't think I would have blamed Joseph. He looked at the scenario. I can't handle this. This is beyond me. Let me just walk away. Now, how did I know that Joseph loved Mary? If he didn't love her, he would try to exonerate himself. He would come out openly and say, I don't know about this pregnancy. I don't know where she got it from. He would have brought her out and made a public show of her. But the Bible says he left her secretly. He did it. He didn't, we didn't want to embarrass her. But then God introduced something which was actually the most important thing that love actually falls on. The angel came to him and said, beyond your loving Mary, there's one thing you need to think about. There's a purpose attached to you being married to Mary. And that purpose is you're going to father Jesus. It is, it is done. It is settled. When the purpose became attached to his love for her, it became more defined. He could not take it up and say, okay, I damn the consequences. We're going to go through this together. That is how you sustain your marriage. Because you won't always have the goosebumps. You won't always feel loved. You know, that gish gish feeling. You know, I was saying to the ladies yesterday that, you know, the Bible says that uh, in Ephesians that the husband should love the wife as Christ loved the church such that he gave his life. And I said, how many of your husbands can give their life for you? Pastor Deji, can you give your life for Gideke? Can he give his life for you? Do you really think he can give his life for you? Like at going point. And then the arm robber says, I'm going to shoot your wife. Or I shoot you. Choose one. But he must have said that to you when he was cutting you. Did he? Maybe. He can't. So what are we saying? If he can take a grenade for you, he can die for you. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, but really, that's what the Bible says. That you love. Let's go there. Let's start from there. Ephesians chapter 5. I put up a post, I think last two weeks or so, on that. When I caught that revelation, I'm like, wow. I've been reading that. Amazingly, we have been practicing that in our marriage, but I never really saw it, you know, like that. 
Ephesians chapter 5. Let's read from verse 21. And further, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. For wives, this means submit to your husband as unto the Lord. For a husband is the head of his wife, as Christ is the head of the church. He is the savior of his body, the church. As the church submits to Christ, so you wives should submit to your husband in everything. Underline that word, as. Like they say, as uh, wise as a serpent. As what again? As gentle as a dove. So they're trying to tell you that if you want to understand how to be gentle, study a dove. Correct? If you want to understand how to be cunning, just observe a serpent. So the Bible says here that in, within the Christendom, in the New Testament, this is how marriages work. This is the, uh, what is the word now? This is the blueprint. This is how I expect our marriages to run and to work. He says what? Husbands, love your wife as Christ loves the church. Nothing less, nothing more. As, see, if you can just get that picture, how does Christ love the church? How does Christ love the church? I am the church, you are the Christ. So the Bible says, you love me as Christ loves the church. And then it says, so also the wives should what? Submit as the church is expected to what? Submit to Christ in everything. Now we are the church presently. So all wives, can you begin to imagine and picture yourself as the church? How much of yourself do you submit to God? How much of your life do you submit to Christ? Are we thinking? Are you imagining it? We say, I surrender all to Jesus, right? All. Because you believe Christ is your head as you are the body. Now let me go to the guys. Husbands, the Bible says what? Love your wife as Christ loves the church. Can you begin to imagine? How Christ loves the church. Imagine how many times you as a church, you've done things for Christ that wasn't so nice. Did you wake up in the next morning and Christ said, it's over. We're done. We're done. I can't take this anymore. As in, I'm done. I didn't come into this marriage to come out. I'm done. Have we ever had that experience? The love Christ has for the church is considered what? Unconditional. But unfortunately, the love we experience nowadays is very conditioned. Very conditioned. I don't give. You don't say, I don't say. How much are you earning? Uh, well, about 100,000. She's earning about 350. The guy too says, why should she know how much I'm earning? So there's a lot of give and take. There's a lot of, you know, it's what you give to me, I give back to you. But have you ever read the scripture where the Bible says that before we knew him, he loved us? And then the scripture that says, having loved them, he loved them till when? Till the end. And that's why when you read this Ephesians, the rules that are given to the wife is very simple though. Submit, JJ. But when it comes to the man, let's continue. Verse 25, what does it say? For husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. He did this to present her to himself. I love that part. At the end of the day, you are presenting. JDK is looking beautiful. I'm going to compliment her husband. 
because he's done a good job. If DDK is suffering emotionally, do you think she's going to look this good? No, but forget it though. Some people are good and masking it. But if you are truly a person of the spirit, you will see in between those pancakes that there's a lot going on. He says that he might present her to himself. So at the end of the day, all the dying for, all the loving, all the... Un it's, 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 that's why I said we're not in competition. At the end of the day, you win. The guys win. Not like the ladies lose. But I'm just saying that you're, you're, you're giving up your life for her. It's not a loss. It's a gain. It's a gain. And then he now says, as a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. Wow. This is a huge one, guys. Apart, I, I believe strongly that apart from giving account of your life as a person, God is going to ask you what you did with that lady. That life he gave you, that he handed over to you, what did you do? That church he gave to you. Christ has done his own part. And you know, Christ will go to heaven and say, I've done my best with the church. Oh, I present the church to you. So now in the marriage setting, God is going to ask the husband, so what did you do? How cleansed is she by the word? Have you washed her by the word? To present her to yourself, a glorious church without spot and wrinkle. And then he says, or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own bodies. And so I see here a, 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 a straightforward principle with God. Love your wife as Christ loved the church. Wives submit as Christ. But you know the problem I, I've come to realize is for Christ, for you to be able to love your wife as Christ loved the church, then you need to understand Christ. Am I making sense? Then you need to understand Christ. Then you need to get a hold of who Christ is. You need to understand his personality. You need to understand how God deals. You need to know what makes Christ Christ. Because you are the Christ. You want to learn from the Christ. How did he love the church? If you flip the other side, for the wife, it says, as the church submits. Now, in the church submitting to Christ, how do we do that? How do we do it? We do it through the Holy Spirit. And so submission for women is done with the help of the Holy Spirit. Because really, literally, oftentimes, it's not so easy to submit as a woman. Because you're an entity. You're a person of your own. Especially if you are that kind of person that has found Christ. You know where you're going. You know what it is you want to do for yourself. You already have everything calculated. God now says submit. It would take the Holy Spirit for you to submit. And then you didn't just submit, submit everything. Submit your finance, submit your body, submit your life to this man. But you know what? The, another issue that I have is oftentimes either the wife isn't under Christ or the husband isn't under Christ. The Bible says that the, Christ, uh, that, that the man is the head of the wife and Christ is the head of the man as God is the head of Christ. So I usually say a headless man cannot provide accurate headship for another woman. It's true. A lady came for the meeting we had yesterday and she's married to a Muslim and she was saying all sorts. And did, 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 the guy beats her and all that. And I just told her the plain truth. I said, he cannot do less. He's not born again. He can't love you as Christ loves the church because he doesn't even understand it. So that is our major problem. That is our major undoing. Where we have men that don't even know who Christ is. They don't even understand what it means to be Christ. So how can you love me as Christ loves the church? How? You can't. And then you now have women that are not submissive to the Holy Spirit. That have not submitted themselves over to the Holy Spirit to, deal, to be dealt with. It will not be easy to submit to Christ. Because when Jesus was living, he gave us the Holy Spirit. He's the only one that can teach us how to be the church. Are you understanding my equation this morning? And so as a wife, 
You submit yourself to the Holy Spirit. He now teaches you how to submit to that man that he has brought into your life. Amen.